Memphis, Tennessee, we bring you the AutoZone Liberty Bowl featuring the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Conference USA winners, the East Carolina Pirates. The Arkansas Razorbacks have one of the very best at quarterback with 6'7", Ryan Mallett. He led the SEC in total offense. This game, by the way, will cap 100 years of Arkansas football in the city where they earned their nickname. After a win in Memphis 100 years ago, the coach said, well, they played like a bunch of Razorback hogs. The name stuck. Ryan Mallett will face the same East Carolina defense that forced Houston quarterback Case Keenum into three interceptions as they chased him all over the field and won the Conference USA title. That defensive front is as good as Arkansas has seen this year. It's Arkansas of the SEC and East Carolina of Conference USA coming up next. Welcome to a chilly afternoon here in Memphis, Tennessee for the 51st annual AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And here come the Arkansas Razorbacks. Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham and welcome to a very brisk afternoon in Memphis, Tennessee. Skip Holtz has directed this uh, football team his four years there to four straight bowl games and two conference titles. And when you talk about Arkansas, everything is on the big quarterback, Ryan Mallett. And I have to tell you, Ed, the last time I was this impressed in watching a young guy in college, I went to see Ben Roethlisberger play and I thought he's got every throw. So does Mallett. That's exactly what Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator, coordinator from East Carolina told us uh, he said he last quarterback he saw that that was this tall and threw the ball this well it was Ben Roethlisberger when he was Miami of Ohio but Greg Hudson brings in a very good defensive front who was all over Case Keenum the nation's number one passer conference USA championship so he'll have his hands full today and don't uh, be uh, misunderstood in one thing Arkansas also runs the ball extremely well in fact they run by committee they've got four running backs well they lost Michael Smith who had over a thousand yards last year to a hamstring injury he was done after the Mississippi Mississippi State game. So they bring four guys in. The lead guy, Broderick Green, transfer from USC, 250 pounds. So don't get lulled to thinking this is all about Ryan Mallett. They also can run the ball. Well, East Carolina, look for number 17 if you've never seen them play because Dwayne Harris, wherever they get the ball to him, something's going to happen. You can be assured of that. <laughs> and they get to, it, it, to him in so many different ways. We asked Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator from East Carolina, because of the extended practices for Bulls, are you going to use them any other ways? And he said, guys, I would get confused if we use them any other ways. <laughs> Running back, wide receiver, kick returner, very dynamic player. Well, it's time to go down to the field and meet the third member of our broadcast team. Please make welcome Jenny Edwards. Janine? Well, Ron, Arkansas head coach Bobby Petrino noticed a couple of weeks ago that his quarterback Ryan Mallett just wasn't himself. Petrino told me that he thinks all this talk of the NFL was eating away at his quarterback. So he called Mallett and his parents in for a meeting and he said, look, I want you to put everything else out of your mind. I want you to enjoy this if it's your last game with us and I need you. And since that meeting, coaches and players told me they've noticed a new sense of purpose and focus in their quarterback. But the last two days here, disciplinary problems have actually been the story in Memphis. Arkansas has sent three players home, including two of the team's three leading tacklers for skipping out on curfew. And just yesterday, East Carolina suspended two of its players for getting into a fight at the Liberty Bowl luncheon. But Ron, they're hoping that after today, the only thing on people's lips is great football. Well, I think if we have any confrontations, we can be assured of one thing as we look at Coach Petrino. It's certainly going to be down on the field in the trenches. Coach Petrino in his second season as the head coach at Arkansas and people are looking for big things here tonight and also in the new year 2010. And there's Skip Holtz. I gave you a bit of his credentials. He has done a marvelous job at Greenville, North Carolina. And he told his kids after they kind of stumbled here last year at this uh, venue, he said, let's go have some fun. He's got a tremendous number of seniors who he, quite frankly, is very close with. 28 seniors, all a part of his first recruiting class. None of them rated above two stars, gone to four bowl games in a, uh, four bowl games in a row in East Carolina record. Matt Dodge prepares to kick it off for East Carolina. And it's Dennis Johnson as the deep man, and he kicks it short. Line drive kick picked up at the 26-yard line. 
And the return will put them in good field position at the 35. Well, let's talk about the young quarterback. And I, now we talk about how tall he is, and you say he's six seven. You might take when he gets in a huddle, he looks down at the offensive lineman, and that is rare indeed. It is. And the one thing that uh, Garrick McGee, the quarterbacks coach and new offensive coordinator, when Paul Petrino, Bobby's brother, took the job at Illinois, said that they constantly have to work on his footwork because he is so tall, those hips so far from the ground. Sometimes his feet aren't in the right position. For the play action throws the first ball throws it complete and it's going to be for positive yardage to London Crawford here is the look at the offensive lineup for the Razorbacks it's going to be Dominguez Grayson Oxner Petrus and love up front and the specialty people green scheduled to start did not but he'll be there shortly along with Adams Childs Wright, and DJ Williams is the tight end. Again, play action. Then they go back to that same side of the field. And the clock this time made by Jarius Wright. Defensively for East Carolina. They start like this. This is a really good down four. C.J. Wilson, Jay Ross, Linville Joseph, and Scotty Robinson. The linebackers, Chambliss, Johnson, and Maddox. And in the secondary, it is Simmons and Davis at the corners, and Eskridge and Neal at the safeties. Second down and short. Keeps it on the ground. Running play, big first down, Dennis Johnson. Sophomore out of Texarkana. Ball comes loose, and it has been recovered by East Carolina. And that was Chris Maddox who came in and knocked this ball out. Dennis Johnson, a running back who spent some time in the doghouse middle of the season, was not taking care of some injuries the way that Coach Petrino wanted. And this is exactly what East Carolina does. One of the best takeaway teams in the country. Nice job by Maddox getting that ball out. Looked to me like Johnson's knee was not down. Maddox, one of the many seniors that start on this defense, did a good job finishing that. And I think Bobby Trino thinking about maybe challenging that, but it looked to me like Johnson wasn't down. Well, he was lying on a body even exactly. if he was. So yeah. he would, he would not have been down. Dominic Lindsay is the lone tailback. They'll fake it to him, and this is Pinkney. Got a throw on first down, and he throws it incomplete. And he went for the man we were just talking about, Dwayne Harris. Little too tall and incomplete. Well, here is a profile on Patrick Pinckney, senior out of Fayetteville. And a sixth year senior, had some shoulder injuries and surgeries early in his career. Lost a little velocity on the ball, and they've worked very hard on how he sets his feet on the core strength in the middle of his body to get a little more zip on that ball. And he's played sensationally down the stretch his senior year. Lindsey breaks it open and is going to have the first down. It's a gain of 12 yards as Tremaine Thomas, a sophomore out of Winnie, Texas, played at East Chambers High School. And he's the man who made the stop. And this offensive line, in the words of Skip Holtz, the second half of the season, we really put our saddle on those guys. And that was a nice job by Corey Dallas, the right guard, coming around on the trap block. Pinkney, pressure, sets up a screen. Going to have to throw it quickly and threw it away because defensively, the pressure was coming from Freddie Burton as a flag goes down. And wow. obviously there's pressure because they're setting up a screen, but they let the screen guys go a little yep. bit quickly. And I, this is, I think, going to be a huge grounding penalty. Intentional grounding. Number 15. Loss of downs, part of the pass. Second down. Same result as it would have been as a sack, but now you get a loss of down, which is the same as a sack, and you walk off almost, it's almost like a 15-yard sack. Well, here's the... Uh, the remainders offensively for East Carolina front Smith Campbell Allen Dallas and DJ Scott and the specialist Dominic Lindsay Giovanni Ruffin also one of the running backs Daryl Freeney Dwayne Harris and Kevin Gidry the tight end second down they're going to take it all the way across midfield to the 46. Zips this pass complete at the 35-yard line to Andrew Bodenheimer. 
Defensively for the Razorbacks. Jake Beckett, a third generation Razorback football player. Stadford, Malcolm Shepard, and Adrian Davis out of Rosenberg, Texas. The linebackers, Terrell Williams, Jerry Franklin, Freddie Burton. Williams and Franklin, normally not starters in the position they're starting today. At Broadway, Leon Floyd and Krim, the starters in the backfield. Third down, steps up, way overthrown, trying to pick up the receiver, Jamar Bryant, and he missed him by quite a distance right there. It's gonna be punting time, and I'm anxious to see this punt because there are no flags that we can really witness that is he kicking with the wind or into the wind, Ed? Well, it looks like it's swirling. I mean, there is a wind, maybe a little left to right here, but the bowls tend to make it swirl, and we are in a bowl-type stadium. Matt Dodge waiting for the snap. Guess a good one. And here's the kick. Line drive at the 21 is Norton. Jarrell Norton. And he goes down quickly after really good coverage by the Pirates. Let's take a timeout. No score. Boy, hit in the backfield. Wingo goes down, and that's Emmanuel Davis who came in and put on an absolutely perfect tackle on the ball carrier. Well, this front for East Carolina, Wilson, Ross, Joseph, Robinson, Robinson, a senior, and the coaches say that you need your seniors. If you're going to have a good year, a championship year, your seniors have to play their best ball, and Robinson has done just that. A really good front. Mallet steps up, has it complete. 30, 35. Joe Adams still fighting. He'll have the Arkansas first down. Finally, it is Chris Maddox who will get credit for the tackle. And Adams is such an inspirational guy for this team. He suffered a mild stroke, which is very shocking for a young man that shocked everyone around the program. And that time, Mallet, good time, stepped up in the pocket, getting the shallow cross. But Adams, three weeks later, was back and against Eastern Michigan his first game had 109 receiving yards and he's been an inspiration to the team ever since. Well Green comes back into the ball game at tailback. Broderick a sophomore out of Little Rock transferred from Southern California. Weighs 248 pounds and they give it to him and he is unable to get anything going. About to hit one minute left to play opening quarter. Here's Mallet. Rolls to his left, throws it, and what a great catch at the 41. Greg Childs, he went up and got that one. The 6-3 sophomore out of Warren, Arkansas. Eskridge had to make the tackle after a 20-yard game. And one of the things that Bobby Petrino, when Ryan Mallett was transferring from Michigan back to Arkansas, one of the things that Bobby Petrino wanted him to do was lose some weight. He got up to 265 pounds up in the cold north. And uh, Petrino wanted a quarterback that could move and roll out of the pocket, and there you see why. First down and 15. <laughs> Gonna run it back into the boundary. Has five, spins around, has eight, and Dennis Johnson is then hit as he comes down out of bounds. <laughs> So let's take a timeout into the first quarter. No score, ECU and Arkansas. So we are back, no score as we prepare to start the second quarter of play. And according to what you've seen so far, uh, neither of the teams have played badly. They just, it is hard getting the consistency going offensively. I, I think this weather, is, it's bitter, bitter cold here. Now, I know I'm a Southern Californian, but this is still <laughs> very cold. And I think these teams, the kickers certainly are feeling it right now. I mean, that short field goal, I think, was all about a, a cold ball. And I think both teams are having a hard time getting a lather going. Yep. I well, not totally him. agree. <laughs> oh, this guy must have some different kind of warming stuff. Nothing to the left, tries to turn it around, and now is going to be dropped. That's Dennis Johnson, who will be uh, dropped for what is going to be, wow, about a six-yard loss on the play. 
So if you're Arkansas, since they've got the football right now, you know, what do you got to do? Well, they've been trying to get Ryan, you know, Jeannie Edwards talked about settling Ryan Mallett down a little bit. He will get a little uh, ahead of himself, but he seems to be okay. It, I think that they're a little shell shocked at how good this East Carolina front is. I really do. I, I, I think their coaches told them. I think they looked at it on film. I don't think that they suspected they were going to be this physical. Mellick steps up, gets it away, has it complete, incomplete. Can't hold on to the ball. That's right. And let's check it on the sideline with Janine. Well, Ron, defensive tackles coach Rock Rogeman for East Carolina has been with the team since 2005, but he had to step aside this season when he was diagnosed with lymphoma over the summer. He's undergone aggressive chemo treatments. He lost a lot of weight, but he told me he's feeling much, much better. He's still on chemo, but he has gained back about 25 pounds, and he said he thinks this defense is playing great tonight. He said they're tackling great, and we've got Mallet on the run. Well, his observations are, are very good so far. That's exactly right. And uh, we wish him the very best. Here's the kick. And you can hear when that ball hits the foot. It's not the regular thud that we hear. And look at this one. Aren't we glad that the ball is hard to kick right here if you're Arkansas? That ball is dead at around the two yard line. Now they're saying the one. 44 yards in the punt. And this defensive front for. It just absolutely got after Houston. They've been doing the same thing. It was the first drive. They gave up a couple of seams, but there these are a lot of big bodies flying around and and uh, statistically not surprised at all that in the first quarter 110 total yards because both defenses give Arkansas credit as well down two guys who got sent home have been playing well as well. Well Patrick Pinkney comes onto the field standing in his own end zone. Two tight ends, and they take it straight ahead. That's Giovanni Ruffin, who's in the ball game at running back. He is a transfer from uh, College of the Sequoias. He's a guy who's been coming on strong for East Carolina. Had a bum ankle early in the season, but he's been a nice changeup to Lindsay. A huge running touchdown against Southern Mississippi, which uh, helped pave the way for them. 6'1, 215 pounds. Out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ruffin again. Picks his way. Still fighting. Six yard line is as far as he'll go. And it's Malcolm Shepard, the anchor of that defensive front for the Razorbacks, there to make the initial hit. When you watch Malcolm Shepard on film, he's a young man who, as a senior, I think it's going to go to the combine and all the protests and he test out very well 6 2 almost 300 pounds moves very well has good balance. I think this guy's going to have a nice career at the next level. Third down they want to hold on to the football they got to go to the 11 here's Pinkney looking drills the ball has a man and the first down is there with the catch at the 17 by Daryl Freeney. And Freeney, a young man who has come on strong at the end of the season. He's been a really nice compliment to Dwayne Harris. And this is just a great throw by Pinckney. Look at the protection also. Good for 11 yards. Pretty soft coverage out there by Norton. Ruffin. Continues in the ball game at tailback for East Carolina. No score. 12 minutes and five seconds left until halftime. Pumped it. Now gets the pass away. Has it complete to Bryant. And Bryant will be tackled at the 22. East Carolina fans happy to see Jamar Bryant back in the ball game. Had a in knee injury midseason. Didn't get to play down the stretch. 2007 led the team in receptions. Big physical guy. You know, he not only brings a physicality to the ball game, but his leadership. The coaches were very, very pleased to, to welcome him back to the practice field and to the games. Second down. Ruffin. 
And Ruffin is close to the first down. Let's see, they're going to spot him just a little bit short at the 26. Malcolm Shepard again with the tackle. They called for it before on a third and short. Why not again? Wouldn't be surprised if the call by Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator, is another quarterback sneak. But third and short. Defense is thinking run, maybe fake something in. You've got two receivers over to the top. Wayne Harris inside. Arkansas would love to have the stop here so that they could get the ball back a decent field position. Here's Ruffin. Tries to bounce it outside. He does, and it'll be enough for the first down. Yes, it is that kind of night. Now those it looks like they're in a duck blind because <laughs> of all the camouflage people were wearing. That's a smart thing, but it's the warmest thing you've got. Try it again. Jukes a tackler, and he's going to have the first down because of the move. Elton Ford is the man who finally made the stop. It's a gain of 13. And they may have to go to more patient short stuff like this and just say, hey, it may take us a while to drive it down the field, but. Yeah, and when you get blocking, like you get a little bit of hands outside, but that's just an excellent job by Dwayne Harris working on Ford. So if you're going to get that type of blocking, why not continue to go back to it? And that's exactly what Todd Fitch said. We may not be able to pound it as much as we did against Houston. We might have to throw the wide receiver screens. Now this running play is short with Dominique uh, Lindsay. On the carry number 24, Dominique Lindsay. The Finish up a bit uh, with Lindsey, but uh, part of that senior class for Skip Holtz, the first class that he recruited when he came here five years ago, and uh, their goal was to get to a bowl game. Well, they've exceeded that. They've now gone to four bowl games in a row, an East Carolina school record. Well, did you know East Carolina has the third largest senior class in the FBS? 28 players in ineligibility after this season. Pinkney got it complete. Nice throw, nice catch. Kevin Gidry. And let's check in with Janine on the sideline again. Well, Ron, as you guys were talking about these seniors for East Carolina, Skip Holtz was telling us how special this group is to him. He said, you know, not only were they our lowest rated class, but when they came here, we had meager facilities. How gratifying that they've achieved two conference titles and gone to four bowl games. I love them for their attitude. Well, we talked off the top of the telecast, the fact that uh, this coaching staff, and particularly the head coach, very, very close with this group. So they just have been easy to handle in adverse situations as well as you know when times are really good as they pick up the first down and I think this group probably you could say has had more good times really than ill times and, and talking to the Arkansas coaches they were very worried about how veteran this team was because they just they don't make mistakes they play hard they don't get down. They've played since this senior class got here 20 automatic qualifying conference schools. Of course, two years ago, they beat number eight West Virginia, and number 17 Virginia Tech. So it's kind of a been there, done that attitude. Running play again, breaks it open big, and that is Ruffin, Giovanni Ruffin, who takes it down to the 41 yard line. Elton Ford on the stop. And now, uh, Arkansas starting to get those hands on the hips. Look, this is the first extended drive that they will have had to defend in this game. And if they are going to contend next year, this is where their growth is going to have to come is to be able to get off the field on these kind of drives. Twelfth play of the drive coming up to back up your point. Ruffin stays in the ball game at tailback. They look at him, but they throw the quick screen, gets a block, and Freeney is open. 20, 15, 10, 5. It'll be first and goal. Tremaine Thomas saved what could have been a touchdown and give credit to a block thrown on the outside 38 yards. Well it's it's Dwayne Harris again. We saw him stay up on Ford before now working on the cornerback number 27 Norton gets a great cut block. Good job by Krim at least to spin Freeney around but Freeney nice job cutting back but that all began with the cut block by Harris. Well we talked about him off the top of the telecast. He does everything from run the ball to catch the ball and he also blocks extremely well as you could see on that play. 713 to play until halftime. Pressure up the middle. 
Ball carrier bounces it outside. That's Lindsay, and he will score. Gets on the scoreboard first. Six to nothing at the 7.03 mark, and the extra point attempt to come by Hartman. The extra Hartman point attempt, attempt. and as we take a timeout, as we go to break, one more look at the touchdown run by East Carolina. Lindsay bounces it to the outside for the touchdown. Well, legend has it that the secret to Dyer's Burgers was Doc Dyer's ageless cooking grease. Now, this famous grease has continued to produce the delicious, juicy burgers for almost a century now. <laughs> I don't know if it's a secret. It's right there, a big bucket of yeah. grease uh, that they dump the burgers in. <laughs> I may go lay in that grease to warm up after the ball game. Oh, hit him one for Prevacol. <laughs> Well, it'd be interesting to see if Arkansas can answer now. I I, I think that uh, Arkansas had that tough loss to LSU at the end of the year. Thought they might be going to the Cotton Bowl, and uh, East Carolina, who lost this game last year to Kentucky, it looks like they're the team that showed up a little more focused. Now again, a short kickoff taken at the 30 and across the 40 to around the 43-yard line, and they will have excellent. Field position. Okay, we're trying to pick up the sheet here, and our hands are cold too. Uh, but we'll get you the exact time. But boy, that was that was a long one. There. Mallet steps up, great protection, got a man wide open, and he hits him. And that's right, Jarius Wright, the sophomore out of Warren, is there for the catch. This is a wonderful group of wide receivers. Top to bottom, I think the best in the SEC. And uh, of course, Greg Childs, right? We already saw Joe Adams, but that all started, like you said, with the protection. If you give Ryan Mallett protection, he's going to see the whole field at six foot seven. Six fifty five was the length of time on that drive, so they did have an opportunity to get a little cool. Here's a running play. And this is Niall Davis. He's a freshman out of Missouri City, Texas, which, of course, is just south and west of Houston. And uh, you would expect with Bobby Petrino that uh, offensively you're going to see improvement last year when he came in. Uh, Casey Dick started most of the season. Of course, Ryan Mallett had to sit out per NCAA rules with his transfer. And uh, this would be the first time in Arkansas's history that they will have led the SEC in total offense. Well, Coach Petrino knows what he has a hold of here. Now, can he get all the components together? In the end zone, had him open, and Greg Childs, it was just off his fingertips. Well, Childs is a guy with huge potential. 6'3", almost 220 pounds. That's Scotty Robinson who came in and nailed him. And they just miss Childs. And talking to Bobby Petrino the other day, he said, if we can get Childs to be focused on every play, he's going to be something special. He's got all the ability in the world, and sometimes he just doesn't quite focus in like they want him to. Big target, too, at 6'3", almost 220 pounds. Wing going the ball game at tailback. He blocks, picks up the blitz, pass, far side, overthrown as he just got rid of that but Lucas Miller was the man who was closest to it and Mallet is either saying that his receiver ran a wrong route or that he thought he was being held and there certainly was no flag and it did not appear that he was being held and I think this here is all about the weather you're right on the edge of Alex Tejada's range and I think because the ball is so hard and Bobby Petrino has already seen this there he is talking with Lucas Miller. I think they expected him to streak down the field, but I think this is the right decision to go for it here. Fourth down, the line to make is the 19-yard line. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down play. Zings the pass, has it complete, and the ball is loose. Incomplete now 
DJ Williams is the man who was the intended receiver. And it looked as though that he was going to hold on, and then it came out. Well, Mallett fit this ball in about as tight a spot as you can. He had to put something on the ball, but I think it's the hit that comes in. Boy, that looked maybe like a catch and a fumble. To me, that looked like Nick Johnson may have caused a fumble. We will take a timeout. Seven to nothing. Pirates lead five and a half until halftime. So we are back. This is uh, part of the capacity crowd that you're looking at here at Liberty Bowl Stadium in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. East Carolina and Arkansas. Got it going a little bit on that last drive, and uh, we were talking about whether D.J. Williams fumbled or not. Didn't matter. It's fourth down, and actually East Carolina probably gets a break, picks up 10 or 11 yards on the uh, turnover on downs instead of the fumbles. Well, lob pass. Got single coverage, and the ball is caught, and there is our guy, Dwayne Harris. And as I told you, if he's around the football, something is going to happen. <laughs> and if you reach Carolina, something good happens. Well, load this up, because this is going to be on highlight reels at the end of the bowl season. That's one-handed, <laughs> behind the back, left-handed, over the back. Well, that was Broadway that he just took the ball away from. That's 41 yards in the play. Unbelievable. Broadway never turned around. A little no. hand fighting, but what an unbelievable catch by Harris. Quick pass in the flat. This time they don't get that paving block, and Bowman is tackled immediately. Boy, it shows you how big that block by Dwayne Harris was. Uh, if they score on this drive right here, after what Harris did on that drive, and after his 41-yard one-hand catch here, you think that probably he still, even though he hasn't scored, will be the most important guy on this team? <laughs> he is right now. For the now. first half, I, I would agree with you. Clap runs at 116 down to 115. Patrick Pinckney. Sets deep in the pocket. Fade route, near side. Caught. Did he catch it in bounds? No. He said he was juggling the ball, I believe. It was the signal given by the official that he was juggling the ball as he came down. It's Bryant working against Broadway. And, and East Carolina has been very, very comfortable. Three timeouts. They're under minute third down and letting more and more of this clock run. Now, on this third down, you've got You've got tripped receivers to the right. Well, he's out of bounds. A good effort on the ball, but well, the first foot came down. It sure did. I think it was a thing of possession, don't you, Ed? Because yep. they're not asking to look at it again. Arkansas shows blitz in the middle, and here they come. And they have to hurry with a pass. Middle screen, and that is the call. That was the call against that defense. That would have been a touchdown, and the ball, he couldn't handle it. Well, what Will, Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator, has done is he has collapsed the cushion. See how close all of those defenders are on those receivers. He is tired of seeing his defenders <laughs> off and those screens where guys can go out and block. I think that's a nice adjustment by Willie Robinson. Beckett caused a problem getting his hands up. This is going to be a 34 yard attempt. Now they're saying 33. It's at about the 33 and a half yard line for Ben Hartman. Good pass. Kick is on the way and he got it. 10 to nothing. Pirates extend their lead. That'll be the end of the first half. And let's go down to the sideline and visit with Janine Edwards. Janine. Coach Petrino, I'm sure you weren't expecting to be down 10 nothing at halftime. What does your quarterback and your offense need to hear from you right now to keep their composure? Well, I know you were to trying relax to relax and make down. plays. We got to relax and make plays. We have a lot of things there. We haven't had anybody get be able to make a play yet. So we got to control the line of scrimmage, block their movement, their angling, running a bunch of line games. Got to block their movement and go make plays. What do you think East Carolina is doing for you guys right now defensively that's proven a challenge? Well, that's what they're doing. They're moving their line. We haven't done a good job of, of uh, relaxing, playing catch, and we got to get something going in the run game. All right, Coach, we'll see you second half. So we'll take a timeout. We are at halftime here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, 10 to nothing, East Carolina. East Carolina, 10, and Arkansas, nothing. 
And let's go down to the sideline. Here is Janine, who just talked with uh, Coach Holtz. Yeah, Ron, Coach Skip Holtz, pretty happy with how his Pirates are playing right now. He said, I'm, I'm happy that we're keeping Mallet on the run, which they are doing because they know he doesn't run very well. He said, we've got to keep running the football because that is working for us and controlling the line of scrimmage is helping also. He said if his defensive front seven is playing great, but he did say that if Ryan Mallet starts to find a rhythm and his receivers get a little bit more comfortable, he said, somebody's going to flinch in this game. He goes, and I hope it's not us. Ron? Okay, Janine, good look at uh, Skip right there. And uh, here are the stats in that first 30 minutes, Ed. Well, for Arkansas, the number one offense in the SEC over 400 yards, obviously not very good. And I think what Coach Petrino was telling Janine before he went off, just not able to handle this front so far for East Carolina. And it's not the yardage for East Carolina, I think that's impressive. It was those two drives when uh, the game was at 0 0 and it just felt like some type of big play in the kicking game or something because neither offense was able to do anything all of a sudden they march down the field twice once for a touchdown and then of course at the end of the half they get the three points so to gain consistency and you know what what do they have to work out? New blocking schemes as far as facing that, uh, you know, the stunting. That well, that's, they... that's the hard part for an offensive lineman. When, when you play a big physical front like East Carolina and they are stunting, meaning two guys are changing positions and you kind of run into each other, th the only adjustment you can make is to go to more zone blocking. So instead of man-to-man -man in your pass protection, you slide your line so that you don't have to take just one guy. You get into a gap. I would suspect we'll see that Arkansas, instead of doing man blocking when they go back to pass, maybe they'll slide protect. We're starting with, like, the right guard. They all slide to the left so that then they could pick up the guy who's coming around on that stuff. Well, Arkansas will open the second half by kicking off. This is Alex Tejada. And this kick, a high spinner and short, taken at the 13-yard line by Harris. And Harris is going to take it just across the 30 yard line to around the 32. Well, and the bad news for Arkansas, you come out from a nice warm locker room if you're Ryan Mallett in the offense, and you get to sit on the sideline and see East Carolina because they start here on offense, and the way that they were playing in that second quarter, I'd be very fearful if I were. Bobby Petrino that uh, East Carolina was just going to go right down the field again on me because uh, you, you get the sense maybe this thing could start getting out of hand. Dominic Lindsay. And he gets the handoff. Good pursuit on the part of the Razorbacks that time and a very short game. Here are the leaders for ECU in the first half. Lindsay has had to share with Giovanni Ruffin a little bit and Freeney with the big 61 yards but uh, the guy who's not showing up there is Dwayne Harris with the great one handed catch but he was the one who threw that great cut block that uh, broke exactly. Freeney on that long yep. Yep. Uh, wide receiver screen. Second and eight little play action here. Rolls the pocket and Pinckney is right on the mark. Completed to Daryl Freeney. And uh, the sophomore out of Suffolk, Virginia, is there. And you can see him up and pointing first down. We were talking a little bit early on about the motivation for East Carolina. Lost this game last year. They won the Conference USA Championship against Tulsa. Came here. We're up 16 to 3 against Kentucky. They allowed a 99 yard kickoff return to start. The second half by Kentucky and Kentucky ended up winning the game uh, going away kind of at the end and uh, coach Holtz talked about how focused this group was coming into this ball game. And he said I didn't wait until this week to remind them though. It, I reminded them some time ago and then they didn't need to be reminded anymore because it was already on their mind. That's going to be a gain of about four yards. Ruffin tackled by Tremaine Thomas. You look at these youngsters for Arkansas Thomas just a sophomore but one of many true freshmen that played a bunch of he played in every game last year as a true freshman so this is for the most part a very young defense for Arkansas but had their struggles this year in that tough conference. Pick me again play action looking throws it near sideline incomplete a little bit low is Brian. 
that they were looking for on the receiving end. A little bit off the mark. Well, let's see if uh, Willie Robinson sticks with the defense coordinator for Arkansas, sticks with the defense he had. Remember when he brought the defensive backs much closer in coverage because this would be a down and distance where you would think wide receiver screen again. And when they played off, that really burnt them in the first half. Well, let's see what the Pirates can come up with right here. They're six of ten on third down conversions. Sure enough, look how tight that coverage is up top and at the bottom as well. Intercepted at the 50 yard line. That's Franklin. Jerry Franklin at the 25. Inside the 20 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Second turnover of the night by East Carolina. But I think when you take a look at this one, you're going to say, who in the world was he throwing to? Uh, Franklin is up like he's going to blitz. And Pinckney just does not see him when he drops out. And Franklin, of course, had that great interception. Returned for a touchdown against Texas A&M for 85 yards. But this is just a nice job and let's not excellent job by Franklin. He's up on the right side of the defense. He drops out to the left into coverage and Pinckney just never saw him. Huge momentum change for Arkansas. So the Razorbacks scrimmage from the 20 yard line of East Carolina. Mallet looking short pass complete tight end DJ Williams. It'll be enough for the first down and a gain of about 13 yards. Now they're getting much better field position than they've had the entire game. But the first half was nothing but fumble punt downs lost it on downs punt punt downs and then the half. Well they got a lot of help with Franklin there getting a good start and they get DJ Williams who's a really good pass catching tight end involved on their first play. So Arkansas brings in a second tight end Ben Cleveland number 86 to join D.J. Williams. And Broderick Green as you might expect the 250 pound tailback number 29 is behind the quarterback. They give it to him and it'll be very short yardage maybe one Nick Johnson the middle linebacker comes up to make the hit. Well, I think this now that you're in second down that to me this is always the one where you think pass and here comes the smaller bodies into the game. We were talking earlier about Greg Childs at six foot three maybe this is where you try a fade. But you also have D.J. Williams good tight end he could work the middle of the field Greg Hudson the defense coordinator concerned obviously about about all of that. Quick count running play left side ball is loose. Loose at the eight yard line. Looks like Nick Johnson. Yeah, and it would appear, obviously, with the, you don't hear any change of, uh, of noise as far as the crowd, but he fumbled it. But it is Arkansas who is there for the recovery. What a hit. And a great job as Niall Davis had a hit here put right on that football. Pinkney pacing the sideline saying come on defense help me get over this tough feeling I got right now after the interception Davis stays in the ball game at tailback number seven third down Mallet lops it for the end zone well overthrown it'll be a fourth down and heavy pressure from C.J. Wilson and Pinkney who through his first interception in 149 attempts. He'd gone the better part of four and a half games without an interception. Catches a little break that his defense held tight, but uh, two runs on first and second down. A little surprised that Arkansas didn't throw the ball before that third and goal. Alex Tejada. Tejada to attempt the field goal, and the kick is up, and. It is good and Arkansas is on the scoreboard at the 10 41 mark of the third quarter 10 3 our new score. Here comes the kick. Let the clock problems take it away. Now that is the longest kick of a football that we have seen today with this very cold weather. First and 15. Pinkney got it completed to 20 25 close to the first down. In fact they will spot him far enough. 
that he will have the first down. It's Lindsay tackled by Burton. And uh, Janine, uh, let's check in with you again on the sideline. Yeah, Ron, I'm down here at the East Carolina bench, and I can tell you that even after the last offensive series when Pinckney was intercepted, this offense has stayed very composed and very confident. Pinckney was actually nodding his head and saying, I'm okay, we're good. This team's loss in the Liberty Bowl last year has not sat well with them. They came here to win. Well, this running play here is going to go for a half yard loss as Adrian Davis, uh, the right defensive end, tackles uh, Ruffin. Uh, Adrian Davis, a young man speaking of past bowls, uh, was talking about Arkansas's last bowl trip, which of course the uh, the Cotton Bowl, where they got blown out by Missouri, and it was while Houston Nutt was packing his bags to go to Ole Miss, and he said about halftime, more guys wanted to go home than wanted to finish the game, and they were looking for a different experience here as well. A little play action, a quick look, and it's picked off. This may go for a touchdown for Tremaine Thomas, and he will walk in. 58 yards. Not 58. I thought that was a little too far. <laughs> well, this is just a bad throw. Thomas does a wonderful job. It was a fake wide receiver screen. Thomas didn't buy it at all. He read the eyes of Pickney the whole way. Pickney was trying to go to Bodenheimer, and that was just a bad throw by the senior. Well, that also was a defense bailing out an offense that has been slumbering tonight, and maybe the offense will get excited on the sideline now and play. As uh, as the defense has started to play here in the second half, and that little exchange there between Bodenheimer and Pinckney makes me think that the quarterback misunderstood what uh, Bodenheimer was going to run there. Jahada with the extra point, and we're tied. 9:04 left in the third. 10-10. Well, Sun Studios here in Memphis is the recording studio that Elvis Presley recorded his first song. It also was a starting point for many rock and roll legends such as Johnny Cash, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins. That uh, place was a very popular and well known in this area. There's a look at Pingy on the sideline. Now, just a moment ago, Josh Jordan, the reserve quarterback, was up and throwing. Now, I don't know if that means he's coming in. Skip, I wouldn't think so because. Skip Holtz right now is talking to Pinckney as though he's going to be the still the quarterback of the moment. But the number two was warming up just a second ago. I would imagine they're going to stick with their sixth year quarterback. Yeah. He's brought him, too. brought him this far, but uh, I'm sure Josh getting a little excited thinking he might get some action in the bowl game. Here's the kick, and again that splat sound, and it only goes to the 10-yard line. This is Harris, and Dwayne Harris up the near sideline, going to take it back for a big return. They're going to step him out of bounds. He'll say at the 46-yard line, and it is the the man who kicked it off at Tahata got a hand on it. Well, a couple of tight ends in the ball game this time for ECU, and a couple of wide receivers, and they'll keep it on the ground. And this is going to be a gain of very close to eight yards by Lindsay with Jerry Franklin making the tackle. Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator, going back to the run game. I think maybe feels like he got a little too cute on that fake screen. So going back to what they do best. And, uh, well, look at been, this. It's been four and a half games uh -huh. since since he'd thrown an interception. And the last two have been picked off. He's got a. Regardless of how poised he is, he's got to be a little bit shell shot. And this running play right here is going to move the chains for him down to the 41. Lindsay finally stopped by Burton. And you know, just before halftime, they only got a field goal out of it, but they were very cool, calm, and collected, moving down the field, doing the same thing. Yeah, I, I think that maybe sometimes coaches do that. You know, they're going at halftime, they want to make some. Adjustments open up their playbook. Oh, we haven't called this, haven't called that. But I think Skip Holtz may have walked over his office corner and said, let's run it a few times and settle down. Well, they got two tight ends again. And this run will be up almost five yards in the play. And boy, if you can do that, 
uh, to heck with the pass. Runs the clock and also keeps people from tipping and getting interceptions. Leon on the tackle. And Holt said it very clearly in the second half of this season. Harris is going to stand on the sideline as long as they're running like this. But Holt said we we put our saddle on the back of this offensive line, and that's why we got to the championship game and won it and playing for the second year in a row in the Liberty Bowl. Giovanni Ruffin in the ball game at tailback, and he'll get it straight up the middle. Breaks it, has five, has close to ten yards in the play. Burton makes the stop. It's just something about Ruffin, as good as Lindsey is. Giovanni Ruffin seems to run really strong inside the tackles and that quick burst got him a real good head of steam that time. Well and you're going to lose Lindsay into this game he's a senior Ruffin you mentioned was a junior college transfer so he's just a junior so he'll be pretty good in the backfield next year for the Pirates. Arkansas showing blitz off the corner it does come and they get a block outside. One tackle is missed 20 inside the 15 Freeney is going to take it all the way down to the 14 yard line 13 yards in the play. Well this is a heck of an answer by a senior laden team 28 seniors we've been talking about it all night. They have not flinched their quarterback goes out throws two interceptions one leads to three points the other one directly to seven and they come out and just start marching right back down the field. Good job by Freeney making the first time miss. Well, they set up shop in the 14 and the running play goes for very short yardage. Stather is uh, there to make the tackle on Lindsay. Well the adjustment that uh, Willie Robinson the defense coordinator at Arkansas has made is to bring his defensive backs up closer because of the screens and I think that will open things up for maybe a fade or a post. Well the running backs Lindsay. You see 62 37 yards for Ruffin. Ruffin still with the better of the two in average. They drop by side of the end zone and it's overthrown Bryant the man that they wanted. Well Bryant excuse me Bryant try it, it, he faked the slant and then went to the fade and he got tied up with Rudell Krim over on that side the timing was off. Uh, Krim did a nice job playing physical. Watch right at the line of scrimmage goes to make the slant check that it looked to me like they got tangled up more. That was just not a great throw by the quarterback. Eight play of the drive coming up. Third down to get a ticket to the four and a half yard line to maintain possession. Quick look in got it complete and touchdown Dwayne Harris. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. We talked about off the top. You want magic to happen. Give him the football or put him around the football, whether he's blocking or catching the ball. And Leon is the man who had the cover. See, and Leon is, is a substitute. He has played. Well, remember Matt Harris. That's uh, Leon in there for uh, Matt Harris, who was sent home for missing Wednesday night's curfew. But that was just an, a quick slant that uh, Leon was just completely late getting to. Hartman's extra point, he got it. So we'll take a timeout. 5:52 on the clock for the third period. Our new score: 17 to 10, Pirates. So we are back, and you get a good look at Harris on the sideline. Uh, he has just been a guy that. Everything that he has touched his first three years there have just been magical, have they not? And he's a guy that uh, they really, at the end of the season, found new ways. We have not seen him at running back. We saw him in the Conference USA Championship lineup at running back, but he's just so, he's got such great body control and his lower body, very powerful, like a running back. Kick on the ground and went through the legs of the first return man. And then it's going to be. Out to around the 40 yard line. Let's check in on the sideline with Janine. And Ron and Ed, as you were saying, Dwayne Harris was also the Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year. There's so many things he can do. But you know, he la he missed last year's Liberty Bowl with a foot injury. He's actually got a screw in one of his feet. And at halftime of this game, they took him to the locker room and they were evaluating his foot because he was limping a bit coming off the field after one play. But obviously, it's not bothering him now. All righty. 
ECU showing blitz here off the, the corner. Let's see if they come. Yep. They bring it, and the run goes the other way. Broken tackle, lighter scrimmage. Has five, has ten, counted off at around, wow, 19 yards in the play by Broderick Green. And that's Nick Johnson who tried to make the tackle. It just got blown up. Well, 248-pound Green from right there in Fayetteville, Arkansas, went to USC to start his career. Transferred and was eligible immediately. What a great forearm because uh, he had a sick family member and the NCAA waived the rule that you have to sit out a year because he came home to help with the sick family member. Pass deep over the middle. Got him there. Caught by Wright. Touchdown, Arkansas. Saw faithful up and cheering here, and for good reason. They have scored 16 points in the second half, trying to make it 17. Here comes Tahada. Make it 17, and we are tied again at the 516 mark. Well, you get a big run from your 248 pound running back, so what do you do? You do a play fake. And watch the safeties. They're looking into the backfield just for a second. And Wright is able to go right by them. That's bad technique by Van Eskridge, a senior. But uh, watch how Wright has to wait for this ball just a little bit. I would say that uh, Wright can stretch it out just a little bit. But Eskridge got, got caught peeking into the backfield on that. And Wright just ran right by him. Temperature drops and the, the temperature of the game heats up. Got a good one going now. Arkansas kind of slumbered in the first half, but not here in the second. Kick taken at the 17 yard line. Harris. And Harris finally manhandled as he reaches the 33 yard line. Now let's check in with Janine again on the sideline. Well, Ron, you know, offensive coordinator for Carolina, Todd Fitch, had told us that one of the keys for them today would be getting offensive production in the second half because they have not finished strong in a lot of the games like he has wanted. So he said, we're going to have to use our screen game more, and this one may come down to special teams. Well, and right now, their special teams uh, are not looking overly sharp. They, that's one of the things that they've got to make sure they maintain their focus on because the kicker also was a sidewinder, but he could see pressure and probably should have been a little faster whether he kicked it straight away or if he kicked it, you know, Aussie rules kick. Well, this, uh, the defense for Arkansas has the last two series settled down a little bit. They, they now know that ECU is going to play it fairly conservatively a lot of zone runs inside runs with Lindsay and Ruffin and uh, they have really started to play better stat they're inside doing a much better job at the point of attack and allowing the linebacker Franklin to run and make some tackles so some adjustments made by the Arkansas defensive front pumped it once now under pressure throws it into the ground let's see was he close enough to his receiver we don't see a flag that is down it's Ambrose who was coming with heavy pressure. Well he didn't throw this he was outside the tackle box but he did not throw it beyond the line of scrimmage so unless uh, uh, he's pointing towards Freeney like Freeney was yeah. in the yeah, area. Well, that's, that's what I meant what yeah. I said he now they're going to throw yeah. the flag. Ooh. Now that is the last play of the third quarter. Yeah. You put a big asterisk by this call. So when we come back, it's going to be fourth down and not so good field position for ECU. We'll be right back. You're watching ESPN. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Now the Razorback cheerleaders, uh, the men and women, 
They've come over from Fayetteville to help uh, boost their club from the Southeastern Conference on our situation. We begin the fourth quarter tied at 17. It's third down for East Carolina. They got to take it all the way out to the 34 yard line to keep this drive going. Grounding called in that last play and a loss of down. Pinkney steps up, throws it underneath, and that's to Harris. And Harris is going to be gang tackled short of the 30 yard line. Jericho Nelson, the first man to come there and make a hit on him. This defense for Arkansas has really played well the last couple of series. It, it looked like East Carolina was going to run for about 400 yards in the second half when this started out, but they've uh, they've made some nice adjustments up front, starting to hold the point a lot better. Well, they got a piece of the last spot. They hang in, caught, fair catch made at the 12-yard line. Take a timeout. 3:33 left, tied at 17. With a tie ball game as the Arkansas offense takes to the field, offensive coordinator Garrett McGee had some very animated words for his quarterback, Ryan Mallett. He said, it's time to get over it. Settle down. Settle down. You don't have to do everything perfect. He wants his quarterback to show some composure these last couple minutes. Okay, Janine, our situation, 333 left in regulation, tied at 17. This is the second worst field position for Arkansas tonight. They set up the screen, and the ball is dropped at the 11 yard line by Ronnie Wingo, the freshman out of St. Louis. What I have down here in my notes, he's a track star, and on that pass, he looked like a track star. Yep. He dropped the handoff. Mm -hmm. He dropped the stick because that was set up perfectly. A excellent yeah, play call by Bobby Petrino. They would have picked up 15, 20 yards. Yeah, try, it looked like trying to get that speed guy yeah. into the secondary. And uh, they had three offensive linemen in front of them. Mamet looks for the second and ten. Yes, this one complete to Childs, and Childs is going to be gang tackled at the 19. Maddox, the first man to come over and make contact. Uh, I like what Garrick McGee said to Ryan Mallett before this drive. Get over it. You, you made a bad throw on a down we needed. Just get over it and move on. He's a high-strung young man. They've been working with him all year, and I think one of the biggest reasons he should be coming back but again we're right back in that third down which has been terrible for Arkansas tonight a slant pass would be perfect to one of the two guys to the right third down line to make the 23 Mallet short drop it is tipped and almost intercepted Wow Emmanuel Davis there to make a play on it well in East Carolina was in Arkansas territory when I said they should have gone for it on fourth down although I understood Skip Holt's logic there obviously looking very good right now but for Arkansas I don't think you have a choice well maybe just a touch early there by Emmanuel Davis but 242 no left call. in our ball game in regulation tied at 17. East Carolina's got to return on this a short kick line drive from the 50 Harris puts a head down to Simmons I beg your pardon Simmons on the return and he will take it to the 41 yard line. Well, I don't think we're going to I don't think there's any mystery here we're going to see a a, uh, a handoff fest I, I, I would think to Dominic Lindsay so you got to think if you're Arkansas batting down a little bit. Cuts it back up the middle, has five, has about eight yards on the play. And I'll tell you, a carry like that is huge as the clock runs now to 224, now 223. Well, career Burton long on the stop. Sorry, Ron. Career long for Ben Hartman for East Carolina, 52 yards. So that's a normal condition. Exactly. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> they would be in his range right about now, but I think you've got to get another 10 or 12 yards I, and I with this say, weather. I even say 15 yards. Yeah, uh, you might be right. Uh, that would make it a 37 yard attempt. Yeah, I think you need to be in about that 35 to, inside of 40 yards for sure before you're trying to field goal on this one. Under two minutes to play in regulation. Pinkney runs it, has a big opening, has the first down, plus about three yards just inside the 30. 
And now what Arkansas needs to start thinking about is uh, using some timeouts because it's starting to look like ECU is going to get at least a field goal out of this and talking to John L. Smith of course longtime head coach I'm sure that's exactly what Bobby Petrino is talking about is when do we need to start using timeouts cannot if you were the quarterback or if you're running back you cannot if you're going to take a loss go down don't try to run and lose even more straight up the middle couple of yards on this play and now the whistle sounds and the timeout will be called to stop the clock at the 120 mark the temperature and what it actually is and what it feels like they're seeing now closer to 10 degrees and uh, that, there it is right there they say feels like 15 uh, give or take a few well, to Hartman's <laughs> foot it probably feels yeah. like it's about uh, minus 15 I guarantee it feels like he's gone into a quarry and is kicking a rock one of the 28 seniors Hartman East Carolina's all time field goal leader may get a chance to be a hero two tight ends Drops, going to throw a fade route, got a man, and catches it out of bounds. That's Freeney. Well, they had a shot. Well, if you're playing for the field goal, I like a run there because now Arkansas does not have to use a timeout. And, and I, I see what they're going for. They're going for the win. And, and they, they had one on one coverage. Freeney. Goes up to make a nice play, makes the catch, albeit out of bounds. But I see what they're going for there, but I always like to milk a little clock. Third down. They need to get it to the 20 to move the chains. Right now, though, they just want to hold on to the ball and put it in a position to kick a field goal. And he steps out of bounds to stop the clock at 109. Well, that's an error by your senior. Under two minutes, the clock stops for out of bounds. So Arkansas just got a break and you can see his uh, his look there shaking his head he, he he realized after he did it it was a mistake to go out of bounds. Ball is going to be placed down at the 29 yard line so it is a 39 yard attempt from the near hash mark. Ben Hartman good pass. Gets a good kick and he hit the upright. He took his time to make sure he hit the ball perfectly. And when he did, maybe the follow through was just a little bit ahead. And he pushes it, hits the upright, and we are tied at 17 still at 103. Well, Hartman was never comfortable. Right before the snap, he, he took a little hitch step. I was surprised they didn't call procedure on him, but he was just never comfortable. And and I can't think that this doesn't have something to do with kicking a hard ball and, and just not being comfortable. There's no there. question. No question. Mallet throws it out in the flat, and that ball is dropped by Green. So it'll stop the clock. 59 seconds left. And now flip it over if you're East Carolina you have three timeouts. Yeah that's <laughs> so now you've got an incomplete pass for Arkansas now you look at Tejada on the other side already has the miss earlier had a couple of tough misses earlier in the year but uh, now the the logic goes on to Skip Holtz about when to use his timeouts. Second down Mallet fumbled the snap under pressure. And he's going to throw the ball out of bounds. Robinson and Wilson, the two piano players slash excellent <laughs> defensive ends, are the man who came in and put a strange cord on the quarterback, Ryan Mallett. Well, and, and he threw it away. So again, look at all of those timeouts for East Carolina. Both of these teams offensively. Just seeing which one can help out the team more, the hey, other team more. Listen, and it, obviously, as soon as this play is over, if it is an incomplete pass, you don't have to worry. If it's a running play, ECU will call a timeout Absolutely. just like lightning. Third down. They got to take it to the 32. They want to hold on to the football. Now it rolls to his right, throws it back, and almost intercepted at the 39 by Eskridge. Well, it sounds like Ryan Mallett has uh, 
been leaning towards coming back and, and the young man has tons of uh, uh, talent but occasionally he makes throws like that the one earlier to Crawford I think another year under Bobby Petrino and Garrick McGee would be just right because this is a dangerous dangerous throw and uh, Eskridge who had two interceptions in the fourth quarter against Houston almost comes up with a huge one for East Carolina there. So Mark and Sean putt formation. And here's the boot. And again, not very long. Wobbly kick. And East Carolina runs away from it. It's going to be dead at the 50 yard line. So East Carolina's got three timeouts left. Can you believe that they didn't have to use one of their timeouts <laughs> on that drive? No. Unbelievable. <laughs> they get the ball right at midfield, 34 seconds and three timeouts. Pinkney sets, now throws, and incomplete in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Lindsey. Well, you've got to think Arkansas is going to be playing off. They, they, they don't want anything to get behind them, obviously. At least make East Carolina, if they're going to do anything, attempt another long field goal. So to me, this feels like Dwayne Harris time for East Carolina. Get him on something where he can get into space, maybe a screen, maybe a reverse something. But he's been such a difference maker throughout the second half of the season. I'd like to see him involved on a short, on a short throw. Thank you. Running throws the sideline has it complete trying to get out of bounds after the reception that he have to call a timeout that's Bodenheimer. No I believe he got out of bounds so they okay. still save that stops it at 20. Yeah. You know one of the things else that maybe should go in their thinking they don't have to throw it to the sideline so that they can get somebody out of bounds no. to stop the clock with three timeouts remaining. And number 17, if you cross the defense up and send him like across the middle or a vertical, something closer to the middle, might work. Who knows? I think this might be a run play to pick up the first down. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Now, I would think that you're going to get the clock stop. They're going to call a timeout because yeah. the ball, exactly. it would start from the red. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. You would lose when when the when they gave the signal for the ready. I think you'd lose two to three seconds before you snapped it. So I think yeah. it's a, a wise use of a timeout. So Ben Hartman looks on the senior out of Winston-Salem. And he's just hoping that they'll move it a little bit closer and then he gets an opportunity to try to win this thing in regulation. Tied at 17, 15 seconds left. Quarterback draw. Comes to the near sideline and goes out of bounds at around the 30. Nine seconds left. Well, with your timeouts. It, it's dangerous to think you have two plays here because on the second play it could go to zeros before you get there. So I think even with the timeout, I, I think you've only got one play and you got to think oh. something with with five yeah. or six yards. I think before you're totally comfortable. Maybe I, I think they may you may see another draw here. Well, the running play is going to go. Look at this inside the 25 down to the 22. Now that might do it. That just might put him close enough that he's got an easier time to kick a very hard football. What a absolutely masterful job of working the clock by East Carolina. They caught a break because Arkansas didn't make them use a timeout on their three and out. <laughs> look, at, look at Skip. Now I'll tell you what. Oh, that's good. That, you'd think this guy had been coaching for 30 years the way he had. I mean, he's walking along smiling. He's, he just told a joke to Ooh, Sloan, the great. holder. That's great. Hey, wants everybody to be positive and, and it, let's kick this thing and get the heck out of this cold. And let's not forget what this senior class has done. And Ben Hartman is one of those seniors. Four bowl games in a row, a school record. This is fantastic. This is this is great coaching by Skip Holtz. <laughs> All the way around. Uh, Clock management and people management. Tied at 17. Three ticks left on the clock. It's going to be an attempt of 39 yards officially. Ben Hartman, a 5'11", 209-pound senior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Sloan the holder. Good pass. 
kick is on its way. And he has pushed it to the right. No good. This has got to be the first overtime in Liberty Bowl history. Not a good night for kickers and punters. I, they have let the cold get to them. Great snap, great hold. Laces out, just absolutely pushed it. Yep. Overcompensated this time. Yeah. Yeah. Now you go to overtime, and for Arkansas, second game in a row that they've gone to overtime. Lost a heartbreaker hey, let me tell to you LSU. You 33 to you got it. Our situation, overtime. First overtime, we're tied at 17. And, uh, of course, you look up at the clock, and it's... Uh, 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, Arkansas has a great record, but they also have a record that uh, I'm sure they're not overly happy with, and that is for really long yes. overtime periods. Well, that, and, and as that goes on, with uh, as cold as it is and guys starting to uh, you know, wear out a little bit, you figure the offenses would have an advantage, and it, it could start to become a touchdown touchdown and that's why several years ago they put in the third overtime go for two which I thought was a good rule change and I think it came out of one of those Arkansas games yeah it did. the the one at Ole Miss mm -hmm. I, I think they also had a six overtime game up in Knoxville against the volunteers uh, I know we did that when that game ended well after midnight we're coming up next on ESPN the Valero Alamo Bowl featuring Michigan State and Texas Tech and a post game extra on ESPN News as well as live coverage of the trophy presentation on ESPN 360.com. East Carolina right back to what was working at the end of the game. Lindsay right, Lindsay left, Lindsay on the draw. Well, Arkansas showing blitz off the corner and they do. The run goes the other way. And Lindsay is only going to have about a yard, yard and a half on this one. Beckett making the tackle along with Burton. The big clock doesn't uh, doesn't run during overtime anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. so they're going to have to keep the 25 second clock down on the field. Third down, third, and it's a long two, closer to two and a half. Pinkney. Steps back to throw. Ball is tipped and is tipped again by Arkansas. And I'll tell you, Tremaine Thomas may have saved a touchdown with the second tip. And now, here, this is interesting because now you have to send your field goal unit on. And Hartman, one for four on the day. I, I'm a little surprised. I mean, this is a shorter kick, but uh, a little surprised that. That Skip Holtz is not going to go for this because Hartman has just not been good in this well, weather. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Two and a half yards is not high odds on a night like this. See if he can knock this one down. It's going to be for 36 yards. Good pass. He's missed this one also. Yanked it left. So Arkansas. Any kind of points they can come up with. They are going to win their first Liberty Bowl game. Well, but it's not over yet because Alex Tejada had a miss in the fourth quarter. And uh, in their last overtime game against LSU, Tejada missed one that would have sent it to a second overtime against uh, the Tigers. Well, his ball club right now, a little bit in harm's way. Mallet throws back. 30 25 and it's Dennis Johnson who makes the reception they still because the ball was thrown so far back because of the screen they only picked up two and a half yards in that play and I think that uh, if you're if you are Arkansas I, I don't think you're thinking field goal I, I think Bobby Petrino has to be thinking let's score a touchdown win by six and get out of here because the kicking game for both teams has been so bad tonight and of course with the struggles of Tejada in a couple of ball games this year, he cannot feel comfortable with a field goal attempt. 17 17, first overtime. East Carolina failed to score. Arkansas on offense, and the running play to Green is going to go inside the 20.
Now for those of you tuning in to see the Valero Alamo Bowl, uh, it can be seen on ESPN Classic until our ball game is over. That's the Valero Alamo Bowl on ESPN Classic. Until this ball game, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl is concluded. As we said, East Carolina didn't score. And the Hogs of Arkansas trying to move it down to pick up some points to get the win. Ball incomplete. And because Childs, the defender, was trying to make the interceptions, if he grabs it, all he's got to he do is turn around and way. walk into yep. the end zone. Well, and this ball was a little late getting over there. And, and a ball that could have been caught, but here comes another adventure in the kicking game. They had to miss one in the fourth quarter here, missed two against Florida and a 23 20 loss. And so this, one against LSU. this one, Ed, is going to be 37 yards. 37 yard attempt to break the 17 all tie in the first overtime. Ball is down. Kick is plenty low, and it is plenty good. The Arkansas Razorbacks have just won in overtime the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. to Janine Edwards. Janine. Coach Petrino, congratulations. A little bit of a shaky first half. You were down 10 to nothing. What adjustments did you make? What turned it around for you guys? Well, defense really helped. They came out and got after the quarterback, had a couple nice interceptions, scored one time for us. Offensively, we never did get in sync, but we kept fighting and found a way to win. And you know, the East Carolina coaches, it's interesting. They thought the game would come down to special teams, but I think they thought they'd be on the benefiting side of that. Are you surprised that it came down to this? Well, I'm not surprised it came to overtime. They're a very good football team. I'm very happy for Alex Dahada and our football team. What a great way to win. Well, congratulations. I know you guys wanted the SEC championship, but you know what? You now have the Liberty Bowl, so congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, so our final score in overtime.